Hello, I'm Bob Trubshaw. I'd like to talk to you today about 15th century paint. More specifically, mid-15th century paint on carvings inside some Leicestershire churches. And why we know it's 15th century and not later. Although we're accustomed to Romanesque and later medieval carvings as bare stone, this is not how they would have been seen by their makers and patrons. All stone and wooden carvings, inside and even outside medieval churches, would originally have been painted, and sometimes even gilded. In a previous video I've discussed how the 12th century tympanum at Essendine, in the east of Rutland, would have been painted to look like manuscript illustrations of the same subject, uh, Christ in Majesty. These illustrations from Catalan manuscripts have retained a remarkable brightness of pigments, and they offer clues as to how medieval carvings would have been painted. And this corbel at the Brude in Auvergne confirms the same colour schemes. But paint does not survive very long on the outside of buildings, and although it can and occasionally does survive inside churches, there's not that many examples in England. Why? Well, because in the 19th century the people restoring churches thought that bare stone looked better. So they came along with stiff wire brushes and removed any traces of paint. In this video we will look at some of the exceptions. The best examples in Leicestershire and Rutland are at Ashby Folville. The roof bosses here still retain a wide range of colours, but not really bright shades of green. And that's because bright shades of green were only available from the late 15th and early 16th century, and these roof bosses are from the middle of the 15th century. Blue is only used rarely as a pigment uh, because the ultramarine, made from lapis lazuli, was especially expensive, which deemed it appropriate for the robes of the Virgin Mary. Earth colours abound, along with two shades of pale green. One of these greens used verdigris, made by soaking copper and vinegar, and, well, as with several other medieval pigments, verdigris was toxic. Now, most roof bosses in churches are from about 1425 to around 1450, or soon after. It's when there was a fashion for adding an extra story to the naves, with lots of windows to let in plenty of light. These windows are known as clerestories, which is a different way of pronouncing clear story. Raising the roof meant a new roof, which in turn meant new roof bosses. Sometimes the major timbers from these 15th century roofs have survived. Sometimes they've been replaced during major restorations. But uh, even then the decorative bosses tend to get put back up. Sometimes these 15th century roof bosses are restored. This is a photograph taken in the nave of Lutterworth Church back in 1987, a year or so before the bosses had been regilded and painted. Now, I don't know what this boss looked like before restoration, or what evidence there might have been for original gilding, but it may have looked like this boss in the South Isle at Stoke Golding. This wonderful sun face was once gilded. We can tell because there's a few small corroded traces of an alloy. But what you're most looking at is the gesso, a plaster-like primer or undercoat, which was pigmented pale yellow to help the gold leaf look even more like gold. Sadly, this boss has not been restored. In the 1990s it got stiff wire brush treatment, and then the bare wood was varnished. Sometimes only traces of pigment have survived. The red paint on this corbel at Coaston was uh, spotted by uh, Pamela Fisher. This is a face in the sedilia in the chancel of Gobi Marwood Church. There are traces of two brown pigments around the eye. These would be iron-based pigments, and Gobi Marwood is surrounded by extensive ironstone deposits, known to have been exploited in the Iron Age and Roman eras, before being extracted on a much larger scale in the middle of the 20th century. And that's it for all the examples of original paint in Leicestershire and Rutland that I know of. Now, I specifically mean Leicestershire and not Leicester, as there are some fine painted corbels in the redundant church of All Saints in the city centre. I've, however, I've not been able to photograph them, uh, because in recent times there has been a Van Gogh experience installation, which is rather appropriate, as Van Gogh's 
bright colours are a result of him using the latest synthetic pigments developed by chemists in the 19th century. Um, Cobalt blue, viridian green, cadmium yellow, cerulean blue, synthetic ultramarine, cobalt violet and zinc white. We simply wouldn't have his sunflower paintings if not for cadmium yellow pigment. Now, if you want to find out a bit more about medieval carvings in colour, then I've put a link below to a free PDF which I put together in 2019, and that has a lot more illustrations and information.